In addition to the Q&A portion of this webinar, we have Dr. Vesna Strasser, Director of Trading Analytics here at CQG. Welcome, Jim and Doug. Hey, how you doing? Great. Thanks for being here. Uh, my name sure. is Tom Hartle. I am CQG's Director of Product Training. I'll be your host and moderator today. Before we get started, I want to mention a few housekeeping items. If you have any questions during the webinar, please enter them into the Q&A section window at any time during the presentation. We'll answer the questions at the end of the two presentations. If you're viewing the presentation in full screen mode, you can find the Q&A in the WebEx toolbar at the top of your screen in the drop-down menu on the far right. If you're having any sound issues, please contact the host via WebEx chat. We'll be recording today's webinar, and it will be posted within 48 hours to the events section on news.cqg.com. All registered attendees will receive an email with a link to the recording. Now it's my pleasure to introduce our presenters, Jim Stavros and Doug Jansen. Jim Stavros is a member of the CME and a veteran trader with over 29 years of experience. He joined CQG in August of 2005. He specializes in black box system programming. His expertise includes development of CQG custom studies, conditions, and trade systems for use in the CQG Auto Trader. Jim's also an expert in utilizing Microsoft Excel based RTD syntax to pull market and study data from CQG into Excel. Doug Jansen's trading career also started out at the CME. After the CME, he continued to research and trade while working for various FCMs and CTAs. Doug came to CQG in the 1990s. He managed technical analysis classes for floor traders to assist them migrating from off the floor to trading off of screens. In addition, he developed and traded automated systems on CQG's proprietary trading desk. And last is Dr. Vesna Strasser, who is our Director of Trading Analytics at CQG. She's responsible for the development of trading and charting analytics. Prior to CQG, Dr. Strasser was head of the algorithmic trading products at Barclays Capital, and before that she worked on the Jefferies Portfolio and Electronic Trading Desk. So let's get started. Jim, we'll turn the webinar over to you. Okay, in a second you should be able to see my screen. Looks good. All right, so... Uh, what I've what I've developed here is a basic Bollinger Band system. So if it uh, goes up to the top of the band and penetrates, it gets short. It has a first target. It'll get short two contracts. It has a first target where it will buy at the middle band, and a second target will buy at the bottom band as well as reverse. It cannot continually take trades if it is staying below the band. So it'll only take the first crossover. It is different to write trade systems for execution than it is for backtesting. I'm going to go through the formula just briefly. For those of you that want a lot more detail, we can go into that later. But for a simple buy signal, I had to tell it so that it wouldn't multiply trade that the bar since the low was less than, and this is actually just the Bollinger Band that I've created a custom study for, so it rounds it to the tick because I want to get the better price. So if it goes up to the upper Bollinger Band, rather than selling the, the Bollinger Band, I want to round up a tick. And I'm actually offsetting it one, so I'm looking back at the value one bar ago, so that price can't change while I'm trading. So on the price, you'll see I put the offset of minus one. This is the Bollinger Band low. It's just a custom study that I created. And get to that so you can see it. So it's Bollinger Band to tick. It's basically the Bollinger Band, you know, rounded to the tick size, and then I ceiling it for the high band, and I use the floor for the low band, which rounds it down. Okay, so that's what I'm using here, simply a Bollinger Band. The size is a parameter I've created called trade size, and in this case, we'll be trading two lots. Then there's an exit section. In the exit section, I've created the get out at the middle band, which is strictly a price, so the signal is one. This is important if you want these orders to work, that you don't put something in the signal box that's going to restrict the order from resting in the book. Okay, so the signal is one. The price is going to be the Bollinger Band middle for my first exit. The price is going to be the Bollinger Band high band for my second exit. This is if I'm getting long. I have additional exits. I have a stop working where I'm going to risk $100 on that trade initially. Then I have a trailing stop working that will actually trail the price by $150, and that's after the entry bar. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and see how I set my page up. So that's my page setup. Over here, what I prefer to do is put on our quote spreadsheet too. So you have all your symbols you're going to trade. You have whatever your position is is going to show up here, and your open trade equity and profit and loss will show up over here. Additionally, I like to keep my statement up so I can see what working orders I have, my fills, and my how much I'm up or down. Each contract will show what I'm up or down in my position as well in my DOM trader, which I also keep on the screen. Okay, so let's begin. This is our down, this is our um, auto trade view. And once you've uh, created your trade system, you'll come in here and you'll just go to a new line. You'll put in whatever symbol you want to trade. So let's say you're going to trade corn. It's closed, so I'm not going to trade corn right now. We're going to trade these other products. Uh, I type in the name column. I could take corn if I want to here. This isn't actually the symbol, but I usually just put the symbol in there. Then I drop my account in, and I have multiple accounts. Then I go ahead and put my trade system in. So when you use the drop down, you're going to find your trade system. Okay, in this case, the trade system is called BB Fade. Then I have to click away from it in order to change the parameters. So all my parameters are the same, but if you want to change them, you can highlight it, right click, and go to Edit Parameters. And just like you would from the screen, you can now change your parameters. Okay, so basically I have a $200 stop, $150 trailing stop and um, it's a 20 period Bollinger Band. Okay, then I put my real symbol here. It'll automatically be in caps, ZCE, that's for the symbol for corn. Then I go over here to the preferences and where it says five, I need to double click on the number five. It'll bring up my preferences box. And in the main tab, I can choose whatever I want. So if I'm gonna use a one minute chart, I choose one minute. If I wanted to choose six minute, I could just simply type six and it would be a six minute chart. If, I choose, if I'm gonna choose a different chart type, I must choose it here. So let's say a constant volume bar with 5,000 uh, going off ticks only, I would have to do it here, whether I'm using flat ticks or not, I choose from here. Okay, again, this is all in the setup. In this case, we're just gonna be using a bar chart and a one minute. If my uh, study is dependent on whether it's a continuation or chart, which many of you will, whatever you're viewing, that's what you're going to want to set up here. So go into the continuation, uncheck no continuation, and make it active if that's what your chart is. Then you'll see A1C in the list of preferences. Additionally, if you're using a custom session, you'll need to go into the session tab, and you'll need to change your session from here to whatever your custom session is. If you're using CQG standard, that's fine. For the recalc tab, you can choose to recalculate in every tick if that is necessary for your study to execute properly, or if you only want your, your system to execute at the close of a bar, you can change this to close and recalculate at end of bar. I'm going to leave it on every tick. And that's it. And then over here to the right, you'll see that there's a reject stop to market. So what happens is if you're working a stop, and because you're working, it's a stop that's constantly changing. If that stop tries to change and place an order into the market, in other words, it would already be true when you place it, the exchange itself will send a rejection back going, you can't place a stop into the market. So what we do to protect you is we convert that market order, to, that stop order to a market order, so it will ex exit the trade for you right away. Doesn't happen a lot, but sometimes it happens and it'll save you uh, from getting hung on that trade. Additionally, in the Remember History column, if I generally leave this set to No, um, that way anytime I turn the system on or off, it clears the memory of the system. If I leave this Remember History to Yes, it is going to remember what my last position was, and it's going to start from there. So if I was long one, as soon as I turn it on, it's going to put in the stops and targets as if I was still long one. Okay, I don't like to use that, but if you're going to trade overnight, you may want to be using the, uh, the remember history. Okay, so uh, to get started, what you have to do now is I've set all these up ahead of time, and I'm just going to go ahead and turn them on. So when I turn them on, you'll notice a bunch of orders are going to start working in the book because it's automatically going to start working these bands. Now, if it's already through the band, it won't work that band. So I'm going to turn them on. Notice in the E-mini S&Ps, it's working already. Um, corn is closed, so I won't trade that. Oh, 
Okay, so I've loaded up quite a few here. And sometimes you'll get that message. That just means it hasn't received all the data yet for that particular symbol, and you'll have to wait and re-click it again. Okay, and I'm all set up. I'll shrink this back down because I don't need it. Okay, uh, my position over here, I do have a position that formed in the DAX, and what I've done is linked all the pages so I can come over here and look, and you'll see that it entered its buy signal here because it wasn't crossed here. This is the first bar that it crossed. So it entered a signal, and this triangle you see is my actual fill. That's an, a dis, uh, study in CQG called order display. And if I hover it, I can see what I actually paid. All right, so I'm long now, and if you look on my uh, – with the order display, you can see where all my um, targets and stops are working. I'm working a stop down here, and that'll show up on the, this Dom Trader as well. I'm working my one exit to get out here at the middle band, and I'm also working another exit and a reversal up here. So I'm going to exit one, and I'll reverse to get short. So that's why you see a one lot and a two lot at this price on my order display. And if I were to scroll up the Dom, you'd be able to see that. There's a total of three working there, one to get out and two to get short. Okay, and that's all there is to it. Now I just wait for the systems to execute. You can see I'm getting executions in other markets. I can go see what those executions are by just clicking on them so I can kind of keep track of what I'm doing. Something going on in the uh, euro currency. Additionally, what I can do is if I go into my, um, or any of these accounts, let's say I go into the RBE, I can also put on what we call the ATS study. And what that'll do is it'll actually – well, it's not putting it on. Hold on a second. Okay, so now I'm going to go in here and modify this, and I need to put in the, the correct account. And what it is, this is my auto trader selection. I would go down to RBE and hit apply, and it'll tell me how much I'm up or down on the position on actual fills. Okay, so that's, that's important to use that if you want to keep track of your actual fill versus what the trade system, which is up here, is getting. So this, the fill the system gets might be different than the fills you get. Normally when you're working a limit order like I'm working, uh, it should be the same. But on your stops, you may find that you're executing a stop and you have some slippage, and you might want to keep track of what that slippage is. Okay, so let's go to one of our winners because it's always nicer to look at a winner than a loser. So here we got long down here. We exited one up here, and you can see that I only have one contract left. If I want to see those fills, I can go into the fills column and see what I've done. I initially bought two down here, and I sold one up here. If you look across, you'll be able to see what order ID you use. So when you see the number, the letter A at the end of your order ID, that is your initial, your initial buy signal, and that comes from your formula box. This is trade A. Then when you go to the exits, this is going to be AA. So exit for trade A. This will be AB, exit for trade B. So you'll see here it says A, and I got out at AA, and you can keep going down. This is going to be exit AC. This is going to be exit AD, and if you had more, it will continue to do that. So this way, when you get an exit, you want to go through and see if something went wrong, you can look into your list and see what exit did not work properly. Now, if you write your exits correctly, they should work properly. A lot of times what you've done in backtesting will work properly, but it needs to be fine-tuned in order to get it to execute correctly in the auto trader. That's why we have the demo account. Use the demo account, set it up, execute in demo, and make sure it's doing exactly what you want. Okay, uh, that covers everything that I want to cover today in terms of the auto trader. If there's some questions, uh, I hope you'll ask them of the host right now. Are there any questions? Okay, then I'm going to turn this over to Doug, and he's going to show you how you can uh, execute this using the API. 
Can you turn this over? Because I don't seem to be able to find my sheet. Are you able to do that? I can stop up here. Okay, I think Jim and I got it now. Let me go ahead and uh, okay, great. get the desktop started here. Um, good afternoon, everyone. This is Doug Jansen. I'm going to take. I'm going to show you guys today what we simply call our API auto. And first, let me cover um, exactly what it's going to be doing while we have a secondary auto selection, um, and I'll cover the pros and cons. So I've got a I've got a system on one minute mini Russell here, and what we're going to do is we're going to turn this on to where the system feeds out through our API into a spreadsheet that we've already created for execution and it's going to key off of the open position size this is a stop and reverse system so I'm always in the market and as that open position size changes this auto execution unit will automatically send market orders out to keep up with the change in open order position the uh, the pros in using this is that you can design any system you want, complex, um, as much as you want, as long as it runs in a backtesting environment in CQG. This module will follow the open position of that system. We don't have to go in and sometimes change the code to fit the auto trading in the integrated client product. Um, it only uses market orders. So one of the cons is we don't have any resting stops in the market. Um, nor limit. So you, uh, at, if, if you have a connection that goes down, or you step away, you certainly can. Uh, um, the risk can be opened up if uh, if something happens. So, um, and there will be no other market uh, order types introduced to this module because you have to match the open position, which means we have to execute at the market to be able to do that and not try to work limits or stops to uh, to keep up with the open position position change. All right, so. I've got a system here. It trades a two lot. Um, it takes profit on one of the trades on the bands, and the other one it runs until the opposite um, signal comes in. It is a peak ahead system. Um, it will give you a signal in the development of the bar. A lot of times it's on the opening of the bar, but not all the time. Sometimes it'll go long and then go short the same bar. Another good thing about using this module is that you can run a peak ahead system through this and have multiple trades occur on the development of the bar and it will automatically keep up with where the backtesting thinks it needs to be. In the CQG IC auto world, you can only enter, exit, and reverse the same bar. That's as the, the extent that you can do. Even if you get multiple trades within the same bar more than twice, um, IC cannot um, handle those type of trade executions. So let's go ahead and get this started. This is a spreadsheet. Once it opens up, You'll have uh, four buttons at the top here. They'll come on orange. Once they connect to CQG, they'll go to this light blue background. And at this point, we'll go ahead and um, load up the trading system. So I'm going to left click on the drop down by the trade system column. The trade system name is All X CM3. A window pops up. And this is where I enter the market that I want to trade. So I'm going to put in TFE for the Mini Russell. Below that, I'm going to go to where it says range. I'm going to go back just a thousand bars in history, even though my studies don't go that far back. But we'll load that up for the uh, for the signals. Um, below that, sessions filters. The Mini Russell has three sessions, so I'll go ahead and put that in there. Um, I'm not going to put any continuation on it since I'm on a one-minute chart. The different types of charts that we can use here are bar, constant volume, T-flow, and point and figure. And then below that is period. This will be a one-minute chart that we're trading on. Otherwise, you can see that you can take higher time frames here on that drop-down. And then in the subscription level, I would always suggest with a peak ahead system each tick because we want to know the calculation as the bar develops versus the end of bar. For those of you that have systems that always wait until the next bar is open to execute, in other words, your conditions are historically true to the previous bar, you can, of course, use a subscription level of um, at the end of the bar for each bar. Okay, once I do that, I click OK. And that's going to start loading up the information. It shows that we're trading the TFE. Now I pick the account that I want to trade this in, which is... The 11 account here, that's 
Zoom Doug 5. And if I go a little bit further to the right here, it tells me the market I'm trading, some of the preferences. This particular system has no parameters, but if it did, I would be able to change those in this last column here if need be. Going back to the left side, I need to give a name to this particular instance. So I'll just call it uh, TFE1 for one minute. And then the working mode, I want to pick by statistics. In other words, when the open position size changes, I want to execute based on that change. You can currently see that the system knows it's long a one lot. Now currently I have nothing in the market. So what I need to do first is I need to establish that position to match what's in the spreadsheet. So I'll go over to the Dom Trader, we'll buy one at the market, and so now we're long one E mini Russell. And then back to the spreadsheet. I need to turn it on. And at this point, now we're tied to the open position of this trade system. And I'm not sure, um, I put it down to one minute, so hopefully we will get some trades here. But um, if we don't, um, in the course of the next few minutes, you won't see a change. But again, if, uh, if the system is not stopped in reverse, open position will go to zero, and it will also flatten you out. So one, um, one other thing that's very, uh, that's actually um, I would call a, a, uh, a pro versus a con is that you can change the trade system midstream here. Now in CKGIC Auto, you could not change anything once auto is turned on. If I wanted to go in here and change the trade system around on CM3, I can do any, t any type of code changes, click apply. The spreadsheet will change to show the new open position if it does change. And of course, you'll have to make that change um, manually. And once that's done, turn it on, and then it'll keep up with the changes that you just made. The, um, the cost of both of our auto products is uh, included with the back testing. However, with the auto trade API module that we're looking at here, there is extra fees for turning on the API and CQG. You'll need historical, real time, and execution. And those come out to about $340. Um, if that price changes for this module, it hasn't been determined yet, but that's the current cost behind it. As you can see, you can run multiple lines here. I've run 10 to 15 systems um, pretty comfortably using this spreadsheet here. And I don't think we're going to get a trade here on. Uh, Doug, do you want to transfer back to me and then we'll come back to you? We can, they can look at all yeah, the, I got a ton of positions. You have something else to cover. Let's, uh, let me yeah, because I have a ton of positions here. on now, so. I will. Okay, hold on one second. Let me get you. Okay, yes, good. Good. I think I got you over there. Okay. Okay, so uh, I don't know if you guys can see it yet. Okay. So uh, you can see all the positions I have on now, um, and I'm up $943, which looks pretty good. Uh, I can go through each one and just take a look and make sure that they're executing properly. Everything looks good here. I'm short two from this di from where you see this triangle, and that matches what the system shows. And I'm waiting to get out here and down here. In the NASDAQ market, the same thing, short. I'm working an exit here, one exit. Uh, in the Dow Minis, uh, same, same trade. You expect these to be about the same because the system is roughly the same for these markets. Uh, in the Ultra Bonds, I have bought um, two at the bottom here. And I'm just waiting to see what happens. This is an expensive trade, so we'll see how that can go. Uh, in the 10 years, I have also bought here. You know, again, the exit's very close, and then uh, the two exits here. The stop is also working if you scroll down. Stop is down here. Silver. So you can see the only way that you're going to be able to trade so many markets at the same time and get this um, this diversification that you're all looking for because you can run into one system where it can just get cold, right? I mean, I'm down in several of these markets, right? But overall, I'm up, you know, 750 bucks. Why? Because I'm using diversification to enter all these. You couldn't possibly enter all these trades yourself. 
This is the big advantage to using CQG's Auto Trader, I think, is um, trading multiple markets. Of course, you can trade one market if you want to with it, but um, I think you get an advantage if you trade many different markets at the same time. Okay, uh, I'll trans Drug, did you get any trades yet or no? Um, we did go short and then back to long with a peek ahead, so um, I won't be able to show that off. But okay. certainly, Jim, I mean, there's I don't have anything else additional to show. So uh, if we want to open it up to questions of me and Tom. Okay, uh, yeah, Jim, for you, I think um, we did have a question about using this for um, spreading and rolling over the market. It's a auto trader. Would that be effective for that or? Uh, no, we do not spread. You cannot use this for spread trading. I don't know about Doug's. Doug, can you use spread trading for yours? No, no. It's um, I mean, we can certainly trade exchange traded spreads through it, but we, it's not going to be um, an automated platform for spread trading or rolling out of a position or a month into the next month. Right. If you do, if you're using continuation charts in the Auto Trader, uh, it will execute the new contract if you're using just the auto rolling contract. So if you were executing in the March, and then while you were trading, you held it overnight or whatever, and the next day it was the June was the front, you'll wind up with a spread on. You'll wind up with a March June spread. Okay. So you'll have to spread out of that. Um, some people just keep it in one symbol, and as they want to change it, they go in and they change inside of here the auto trade view, the particular uh, symbol. So where I've put just for the symbol, uh, I've just put the symbol of uh, RBE instead of that or EP, I would put in the actual contract that we're currently in. So, you know, for the June contract for the E-mini S&Ps or the March contract, I mean, I would put EPH4, EPH5. And then I would not roll it over. Okay, thank you. Um, what about using volume-based stops? Can you do that also here with the Auto Trader? Um, you can't use a volume-based stop per se. In other words, the stop won't rest like you see in the book here. But you can use uh, – it becomes basically Boolean. So it goes down there, and if I'm resting off of an, uh, a price because of the bid or offer, it's easier to look at in the E-mini S&Ps. So if I'm looking – in the E-mini S&Ps, and I'm trying to work a volume-based stop, and there's 270 uh, on the bid, I can certainly tell it not to send the order in until there's 50 left, let's say. But then it's going to send it in as a market order at that point. So it won't be resting. I, I, it's not going to be as safe as just trading outright, but of course, uh, as having it rest in the book. But if that's what you choose to do, yeah, you can do it. It just won't be showing. Okay. What about um, <clears throat> volatility-adjusted unit sizing? Can you do that? Uh, yes, you can. Now, um, once you've entered the trade, of course, then you're in it for that quantity. But the next trade, based on volatility, can be adjusted according to your formula. So within the confines of the formula box where I have trade size, this can actually be a formula that is based on the volatility of the market or could be based on you know, whatever your base amount was. So if you started with 100,000 and you wanted to divide it by X amount, you could do that. Okay. Another question is, do the two auto trade systems work together for position limits and other risk parameters? Um, well, the all position, position limits are, go ahead, are going to be done through CAST, and that's – there, there isn't a setting in either one of the auto trading options that are going to that you can put. Um, let's say you're allowed to trade 20 crude, and you only want to trade five at a time. There's nothing in there that's going to prevent auto trading from putting on a 10 lot or a 15 lot on either one of the autos. Um, but certainly, you you're not going to find an area to where you're going to end up with more than what you what the system says it should be doing anyway, unless there's internet outage or, or something else goes wrong, but the cast at your FCM is going to be your your safeguard if not over trading. Okay. Well, we'll give it another couple of minutes. That's the, all the questions we've had so far. Can you use multiple studies so that three studies have to meet a level before a trade can execute? Yeah, a lot of these are back testing questions, and all this can be coded up in the system itself. So what 
what you see off of the system in the back testing is what auto is going to pick up and key off of. Okay. So yes, that 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 answer is it can be done in the uh, in the coding in the system. Um, one other thing I, get, I don't think Jim and I have really touched on is the, the auto is exciting, but if you haven't sat down and put time into system development, um, you're not going to be trading auto at the end of the week. It, it, there's a there's a time frame that is going to take in terms of system development, testing, optimizing, and all that. Sometimes not just months, but you know a year plus out before you're ready for auto. So, uh, and one other thing, auto is not a scalping product. We don't have the uh, we, we would never de de design the engine to be in and out of the market in milliseconds multiple times trying to grab a tick here and a tick there. That's not the uh, intent of the product and won't work that way. But it will. It will work well on um, minute and sub-minute charts. Just be careful on the sub-minute charts, like T-flow or constant volume bars, not to um, to be too low on your aggregation level. Meaning that if you're watching the market and crude numbers come out on Wednesday, and all of a sudden your machine falls behind because, of course, you've got to draw um, a thousand bar T-flow bars because of the influx of the data. Auto cannot trade. Um, because the uh, the data is just not being processed fast enough, and you're going to have trades that aren't lining up. So, just be careful in terms of the time frame you pick. If it's too light, if it's too low, and you're in a volatile market, there is a chance that um, we will have latency and and miss trades because of that. But anything from a one minute chart on up these days, um, you should be fine trading. Yeah, okay. and Doug makes a valid point. Um, just. Uh, we are not a high frequency trading platform and that I, I just wanted to drill that in. So if you think you're going to put this on and make a tick or something, it's just the wrong, it's the wrong platform for you. It's, we don't have that. So you don't want to have something where you have a stop one tick away and a target one tick away. The market can move so fast you could get filled on both. And then this is going to cause confusion for the trading systems. Okay. What happens if, um, the computer was to you know go down while you were in a position for the system running. It will try to re-log back in. It'll do three attempts to log back into the uh, uh, trading system. Even if your CQG was to crash, it would try to log back in and log back into your trading. And if you have remember history on, it will work. It'll re-put the targets and stops into the market if they've been canceled. Right, and any resting orders at the exchange stay there. We do not cancel them if you lose connection. We do so not recommend. Said, yeah, we don't. We also don't recommend that you leave your machine unattended, of course, uh, and just you know go napping um, uh, while your system is trading. The, the system is supposed to facilitate what I show you here, which is to trade multiple markets at the same time, which is impossible. But we're not recommending that you go to sleep and have you know positions on. That's I don't think that that's a good idea. No. Remember, it is an internet-based product, and you can crash. That is normal. Mm -hmm. Now, if your system is, if you set it to enter on the open of the bar, will the auto trader send limit order or a market order for the open? Okay. You can oh, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. In in the CQG IC site on the API auto, it's always a market order. But so in here, you'll see in the. You can see the choice for market stop limit or stop limit. Those are your choices. You choose what you want. You can also peg the bid in the offer, too, if you want to join the bid. If it moves up a tick, it'll automatically follow that bid up. Right. I guess as we call a trailing limit. Um, so, yeah, follow-up question to that. Can you set it so the system would flatten you out if you were disconnected? No. Yeah, that would be a phone call to your FCM to, to uh, unless you have another um, backup internet um, source, the, the call to the FCM to flatten that out would, would have to take place. Out, out yeah, if, the last if you reconnect, years if you were able to this, I have not had to get on the phone with the FCM. For no, I haven't either. Now. So it, it's, it's a pretty much of a rarity. You can always re-log back in and then exit the trade at that point in time. So, you know. You can also use this. This product comes with CQG Trader, so you have a backup where you can use that. You can even use the CQG Mobile and exit from your mobile phone. 
So one of those options is going to be good for you. Okay, thank you. Um, if the CQG, the data was to start to buffer, what uh, would happen in that case? Can you well, you might real-time data window. Yeah. Oops. Would I be able to enter a position manually and then activate the auto trader for exiting the uh, position? I oh, forget so where that, that is now, Doug. Do you know where that is again now? Because it used to be yeah, here. You're, you're almost on top of it. It's um. Am I? Oh, here it is. Display real time page. Yeah. Okay. If you want, you can keep this open. Uh, here you can see I'm 60, uh, is that microseconds or milliseconds? Millis I'm not sure. Milliseconds. Milliseconds behind. Um, that's normal. That's not a big deal whatsoever. You know, uh, generally uh, you're looking at a 200 millisecond round turn anyway, so 50, 60 milliseconds is no big deal. But if you saw this get, you know, eight, ten seconds behind, you know, you'd be nervous about that. You know what I mean? It shouldn't happen. And I've, I've run, you know, even as high as 50 trade systems, and depending on the complexity, if they're simple systems like I, I show you here, no problem. But if you're running complex systems, you know, you'll want to have this real-time data status open and keep an eye on it to make sure you're not getting behind. And again, an event like you saw today could always cause data to lag for every vendor was behind when the Canadian dollar, when they did the surprise cut this morning, you know, for a fraction of a second, everybody got behind, but the machine will catch up and you should be okay. Um, in terms of back testing, there's a question asking if uh, portfolio analysis and optimization, optimization uh, maybe will be coming in the near future. Uh, we've been told that that is uh, in a project that's on the table right now, but uh, we don't have a time frame for it, and, uh, you know, we don't, it's just not, it's, we don't want to go down the road of giving you a date and making anyone disappointed. As of right now, we we are working on it, but we don't have it. Okay. So, so far we've answered all the questions. We could wait another minute here just to see if there's any late ones coming in. Okay, well, I think we've uh, pretty much uh, covered it. I want to say thank you very much, uh, Jim and Doug. Um, if we do get any more questions, we can uh, forward them to you via email. Okay, uh, I'll just show them the one there. last thing. Uh, sure. That is, see all my orders that are working here. If I want to turn them all off, in the left toolbar, I can go into here and say all off, and it will cancel all of these orders. So once I say all off, it cancels all orders, and now it's up to me to exit these positions. I can go to them, get out at the market, or do what I want to, you know, one by one. Okay, that, that's it. That's the last thing I wanted to cover. Thank you very much. Um, as I mentioned at the start, uh, everybody who attended the webinar or registered for the webinar will receive a link to the recording. Uh, again, thank you, Jim and Doug, and thank you, everyone, for attending our webinar. Thanks, Tom. All right. Thank you, sir. Bye. Bye.